2022 is in its final few months. The World Cup is almost on the horizon and winter is coming. But if you smell a change in the air, then you are not alone. Opposition parties in Meghalayas and one could very well say even one alliance partner smell the change in the air. I am Kalyan Deep and in this episode we try to explain why Conrad Sangma is facing the battle of his life in the coming days. Soon for months. The village of Assam in the 75th Independence Day. The recently concluded Meghalaya Legislative Assembly session looked less like an assembly session and more like a UFC bout. Opposition took no hostages and aimed squarely at Chief Minister Conrad Sangma, which is understandable, but Sangma for once did not have many comebacks. But it was not like this in August this year, when a year after the deadly wave of the pandemic, Sangma and his Assam counterpart, Himanta Biswa Sarma, said joyously having resolved the first phase of the Assam-Meghalaya border dispute. At that time, and especially in light of what had happened at the Assam-Mizoram border in July 2021, the Assam-Meghalaya border resolution showed how two state governments and the central government came together to solve a pressing issue. So far, so good. But even as the ink on the agreements had dried, it became clear that, well, not everyone was happy with how the border issue was resolved. Within days, as our reports showed, you can read them here, there were anger and discontentment among the locals. Some who were now part of Meghalaya wanted to remain with Assam, others who wanted to go to Meghalaya but instead became Assam residents. Now, an important point to note here is that the opposition parties in both states have targeted their state governments over this issue. Congress protested against the resolution, pointing out that even ruling party MLA Dr. Amyo Kumar Bhuya and MP Topon Kumar Gogoi protested against it. The party a week or so ago during a visit to Lumpi in Boko district said, we have reasons to believe that our border is not protected under the leadership of Himanta Biswa Sarma. But here's the thing, Congress cannot touch Himanta Biswa Sarma right now. No amount of protest or resentment can undermine Sarma whose popularity remains at an all time high. And given that his government is only a year old any and every protest of Congress, no matter how big the issue is, it is only an administrative inconvenience for Himanta Biswa. But how Conrad wishes he was in Himanta's shoes. Protests may not mean much to Himanta, but for Conrad, every protest puts his re-election into question. And while the traditional opposition, Congress, may not exist, in its place the TMC has ensured that Conrad does not have an easy time. The TMC has gone on record to say that it will repeal the assam meghalaya border resolution if it comes to power and for the people disgruntled by the resolution, this is music to their ears. Now, can a state government reject a deal brokered by the Home Minister? Unlikely. But hey, elections are almost here. Who cares about reality anyway? It is the best promise, the best deal, the biggest dream that you can sell. That matters. The reality matters little and that too after the elections. And it is not just opposition parties. Even last year, Sangma's allies were protesting. K.P. Pangnyang, the chief of Hill State People's Democratic Party, an ally of the ruling Meghalaya Democratic Alliance, had alleged that three villages that were originally a part of West Kase Hills no longer figure in the list of places that were accorded to Meghalaya in the pact inked by Chief Minister Conrad Sangma and his Assam counterpart to resolve disputes along the interstate border. And good luck to Sangma if he thinks the BJP will come to his aid. Let us not forget that just a few weeks ago, the Meghalaya police arrested one of the strongest leaders of the BJP, Bernard Marak, leveling extremely serious charges against him. The implications of his arrest? Watch our decoded video on that issue up here. It is not just the border resolution that has given a headache to the Sangma government. Remember the grand plans to build casinos on the assam meghalaya border? How the Meghalaya government would ensure that only non-Meghalayans use the casino and how the government would only make money but allow none of its side effects? Not happening. 
two days after the Meghalaya government said it was granting three licenses for the setting up and commencement of the casino industry in the state, the CM said in the assembly that the Meghalaya government has accepted public viewing regarding the functioning of casinos amid the strong resentment shown by several sections of the society in Meghalaya, particularly the Khasi Jaintia Christian Leaders Forum and the traditional heads of Ribo district. Uh, I've been very clear that we have given the instructions to stop any further process to happen. But the processes that happened before that order was given, those processes are there. Hence, um, uh, the, the decisions that we had taken and the communication we had made to everybody was we are not going to move any further than where we are. But before this debate started and before we had met the NGOs and the church leaders, certain processes had already taken place. And those are the processes that were mentioned in the house that day. That happened to be three provisional licenses. Provisional means it's a temporary license. That was given on the condition that within six months or eight months, the operations have to start. And hence, we have put a stop to everything after the discussions we had with the church leaders and with the NGOs. So we have not misguided anybody. I just want to make that clear. We have covered the issue of how bad the state of education is in Meghalaya. You can watch our video here where we discussed how teachers of all people were considering picking guns. But as our most recent story shows, if anything, education has become even worse in the state where higher education has anyway been mostly focused in and around Shillong. Now even lower primary schools are suffering extremely and it is safe to say that things are unlikely to change at least in the next elections. To make it worse, the worst education system is in a region which is the home to political heavyweights of which Mukul Sangma is one. Perhaps that is the reason why TMC, which is attacking Conrad Sangma on multiple fronts, remains relatively silent on education in Garo Hills. It is becoming increasingly clear that the Conrad Sangma government has not been up to the mark on several fronts and sure, the pandemic played a role. But the education system in several regions of Meghalaya has been stuck in the 20th century, well before the pandemic. Can we even begin to compare the literacy rate of Meghalaya with, say, Mizoram, which faces much stronger geographical challenges than Meghalaya? No. And then we have thousands of teachers who are no close to doing what they do best, teach. Schools without teachers, teachers without schools, students without either schools or teachers. In short, the worst possible scenario for a leader seeking re-election. No, we are not foolish enough to suggest that Conrad Sangma is going to lose the elections. Politics does not work like that, as you know. But with allies who are less trustworthy than the Nigerian prince who wants you to share your bank account details to transfer $500 million and a resurgent opposition, carefully avoiding their failures in their respective constituencies, Conrad Sangma has his work cut out. Winter is coming, and when it ends, things could be very different for one Sangma. The question is, which Sangma, Conrad or Mukul, will come out victorious? Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.